Welcome back. Even before Hurricane Harvey hit, President Trump and Congress had a pretty big to-do list for September. Passing a budget, raising the debt limit, basically our credit card line, keeping the government open, deciding whether and how to pay for Mr. Trump's border wall, and of course, getting tax reform started. And the president claims he still wants to do health care. All that would have been hard enough if President Trump weren't weakened by some poll numbers in the 30s now and an increasingly testy relationship with his own party. Joining me now to talk about what could get accomplished this month is Republican Senator Roy Blunt of Missouri. Senator Blunt, welcome back to Meet the Press. Good to be with you, Chuck. Let me start with North Korea. Um, it seems like the conversation is the same. It used to be every about three months we'd have the North Korea conversation now, and fortunately we're having it every three weeks. Sanctions aren't working. Um, these joint military exercises don't seem to have an impact on him to, to ratchet things back. He continues to ratchet things up. What's left uh, in the diplomatic arsenal? Well, for 20 years, diplomacy by itself appears not to work very well. Sanctions without Russia and uh, China being interested in solving this problem don't work very well. I think the president putting everything on the table is, is, uh, is not a bad thing right now, both uh, for uh, North Korea, but maybe more importantly for China, mm -hmm. uh, to be thinking about how consequential these, the, this behavior is. You know, in the Intel Committee that I serve on, I think it doesn't disclose anything to say that in the last year, this has probably been the number one topic uh, month after month. What was happening there? What were we going to do about it? Uh, and um, I hope uh, the neighborhood understands how critical this is. Uh, is the assumption now among the, among the high level folks in the government that Russia and China in some ways have actually, I mean, North Korea appears to be on a faster track in their developments. How helpful has the Russians and perhaps the Chinese been to them? Well, you know, we, we there, there's some sense that they have been more helpful than they should have been and more sustaining to the economy than they should be. Uh, everybody in the world, as well as particularly the countries that are in the region, have a lot at stake here. Nobody in their right mind would want this to happen. Uh, you've got a leader who is both spoiled and reckless. Spoiled and reckless is not a unique thing to find in the world today, but it is unique with somebody who has control of what may now be hydrogen weapons as well as uh, nuclear weapons. Why are the Russians helping them? The Chinese, you, there, there's, an, there's been some analysis as to why the Chinese are not quite sure. They're afraid of a unified Korea. They're afraid of it becoming a, an ally. There's some at least diplomatic understanding there. What are the Russians up to? Is this simply to distract the United States? Well, you States? know, the Russians have had, had a, a Korean interest for well over 100 years. Mm -hmm. It is uh, close to them. It, is, it is, is another outlet potentially for them. Uh, I think the Chinese have more at stake and do more to sustain that economy. They could also do more to quickly cool that economy down. Uh, though with, uh, with this leader, does he really care about the other people in the country, or does he just care about himself and staying in power and intimidating whoever's necessary for him to stay in power in his, in his own country. All right, let me start with the to-do list that you guys have in September. Mm -hmm. um, it isn't a, a full month because there's, some, there's a lot of holidays, so actually you have probably about two we working weeks to actually get some stuff done. Um, the, the aid to Harvey, uh, does this mean that the debt ceiling fight is postponed because of Harvey, the government shut down potential brinksmanship is not going to happen this month because of Harvey. Is that fair to say that all of this will get packaged together to at least keep the lights on for three months, raise the debt limit? Is that where we're headed? I here? think it does create another uh, reason as to why you want to keep the government open. It's frankly, uh, no interest in Republican leaders. I would think any leaders on Capitol Hill of not keeping the government open. Uh, but the president's attention to this issue, I think, uh, uh, puts another reason on the table to, to to get things done in September. You know, there's some religious holidays in September. There are other, uh, there's a limited number of days to work. There's a, a, a child insurance uh, bill to be extended. The FAA, the Federal Aviation, you just added more to the to, to be extended. Than, plus, than. keeping the government running, and some of those things will have to be uh, combined. I will say this on. Uh, on Harvey. One, uh, the things the mayor just talked about, mm -hmm. uh, the FEMA money, the stabilization money, the cleanup uh, money, all important to do quickly. Uh, the uh, SBA loan money to get people back in operation, all important to do quickly. That's the money the president appears to be asking for. Beyond that, I don't think we want to make the same mistake that they made with Sandy, which is ask for way more money than you knew yet 
what you need. We can do this in multiple in tranches, occasions, yeah. just like we did with the Joplin tornado a few years ago. Are you comfortable with raising the debt ceiling with the Harvey money? As, as it sounds like the president wants that. Are you comfortable with combining yeah, that's, all that's, that together? That's one way to do it, and really the whip, You'll vote for the, that? the whip and the leader need to look at how the votes come together to make that happen. Uh, but uh, you, you could support something like that. Well, I'm, you know, I never have great enthusiasm for raising the debt ceiling, but the debt ceiling, remember, is to pay for things that the government has already committed to. Not this has not a future spending thing. This is the bills we've already uh, in, encumbered, and whether you put that with leaving the, the doors open for the government or the debt ceiling vote is something that will be decided in the next few days. Well, I expect. Let me ask you this: What's been the reaction among Senate Republicans with the president's tough words on Mitch McConnell in the month of August? Is it going? Is it going to make it harder? To get some things done. Well, you know, they're both tough men. They're, they're both tough men. I think they uh, are both longtime negotiators. They have been in uh, situations before where everything didn't go exactly like you wanted it to. Members were uh, doing things in their district. I imagine what most members were hearing were either you're too supportive of the president or not supportive enough of the president without much discussion about a Mitch McConnell uh, president or, or, or a Paul Ryan president. Uh, presidential relationship discussion. Well, I want to ask you, though, this, this about a John McCain op-ed from Friday. He writes this, Congress must govern with a president who has no experience of public office, is often poorly informed, and can be impulsive in his speech and conduct. We must respect his authority and constitutional responsibilities. We must, where we can, cooperate with him. But we are not his subordinates. We don't answer to him. Is sound, now John McCain may be in a different place than you are as far as the president's concerned, but is that the general sense now that that the Senate and the House Republican leadership want to reestablish that the legislative branch is equal to the president, not answerable to him. Well, you know, I think for the Congress to understand fully and the country to understand that these are two separate branches of government is a good thing. I think it's also a good thing to understand that these are not people that you have much hiring or firing uh, opportunity with as it relates to what individual members of the Congress decide uh, they, they need to do. Uh, so certainly that's important. In terms of the president's uh, ability in his job, I will tell you the one thing the president understands better than anybody in the country today is to how to drive a message, uh, how to communicate with people using new ways of communication, and frankly, just a lot better at that than anybody else is. Since I have you here and you're a Missouri guy, I had to ask you about what Jack Danforth wrote a couple weeks ago because it was a pretty stunning comment. He's, he was pretty... Um, uh, tough on the president. He said, now comes Trump, who is exactly what Republicans are not, who is exactly what we have opposed in our 160-year history. We are the party of the union, and he is the most divisive president in our history. There hasn't been a more divisive person in national politics since George Wallace. Um, Senator John Danforth wrote this op-ed, and in, in he was not happy with the president's response to Charlottesville. Um, any part of that statement that you agree with? You know, Senator Danforth's always been helpful to me. He's a friend of mine. He, this is not unusual for him uh, to set a standard that is not necessarily the standard that gets things done. Uh, we have to work with the president. I think it's a mistake to get uh, in a fight with the president. Uh, it's not a mistake to disagree when you disagree. It is a mistake to suggest that somehow this president, who was elected just as the Constitution prescribed and has the responsibility to lead the country, that, that somehow we need to not work with this president, I think is a, is a bad road to go down. Is the president as divisive as Senator Danforth? Is claiming? I don't think so. I don't think so. I was with the president in Springfield, Missouri, my hometown, Wednesday. He uh, talked about the importance of better jobs and more take-home pay and how we could get there. Uh, and believe me, that's a message that resonates in the country. We're in almost at the end of a full decade right. of people's take-home pay and what they can spend on their family has not increased. The president wants to see that happen. We ought to all be focused on making that happen. That'll be one of the real tests of whether this Congress and this president can do the job. All right. Roy Blunt, you have a busy September. Good to be with Republican you. Republican Senator from Missouri. Good to see you, sir. Thank